Hello and welcome. So in this short video here, we'll take a look at the thermal performance and also the uh, the fan noise performance, the acoustic performance rather, from the Lenovo Log 15. Having gone through a battery of performance tests, having looked at a full review of this device, and also having done an upgrade, be sure to stay tuned for the follow-up on the 8 versus 16 gigabytes of RAM debacle in the light in the late uh, in the latter half of 2023 as we jump right into 2024. There are some really interesting insights there to be had, but for this particular video, we'll jump right in give you a little bit of an overview of Lenovo Vantage, what's changed, if anything, since the beginning of the year, since I looked at some of the earlier Lenovo devices in 2023. And then we'll talk about what the actual performance of this looks like in terms of the thermal performance, how it handles in all of the different modes that are available on this device. And then finally, we'll talk about the fan noise at the device level and finally at ear level before we close out this video to give you some interesting thoughts about whether or not the thermals and acoustic performance on this would be right for you. All right, next we'll take a quick look at Lenovo Vantage, which is a software that's used to control and manage the Lock 15. We'll particularly talk about the four different modes that are available on this device and whether or not that Lenovo AI engine really has started to do anything since we've been seeing this for nearly a year now in many of their devices. So let's first jump in and look at the profile. So once you've launched here your Lenovo Vantage software, you're gonna jump right in here and you'll see that there'll be a thermal mode at the top. If you click this icon, you'll get four additional modes. These are what Lenovo provides for you to be able to switch between the different power profiles essentially for the CPU and GPU as they balance the device's thermals and performance. So we'll start at the very top here and we'll work our way towards the bottom. So performance mode will try to boost you know, as much power as it can to the CPU plus GPU combination. This is essentially the mode that you should be playing in if you want to game. Uh, for also production uh, or sorry, uh, content creation workloads, video editing, any rendering, you should be using this mode as well. And keep in mind that the, the software here and the hardware is intelligent enough that if you're in this mode, but really not doing anything taxing, for the most part, your device will be silent. So it's actually not a bad option to do that. Next, if we step down, we still have balance mode here. Balance mode allows us to do a combination between the CPU and GPU in terms of power performance. Uh, this helps a little bit better in terms of managing the battery life as well uh, and in my testing as I've found but if you're looking for something that's just you know you set it and forget it use this mode here. In addition, and Lenovo's been touting this heavily in all of their devices lately, is the AI Engine Plus. And I believe we're now on the second iteration with their LA2 chip, which is the Lenovo AI Engine, which monitors all kinds of statistics around your device and tries to fine tune what amount of power is being sent to CPU or GPU based on the workload that you're running. So if you're gaming, it's gonna to try to boost that GPU. If you're doing something that's CPU intensive, perhaps compiling, editing some you know code, what have you, it'll try to optimize the CPU you. Now, that said, you know, this is one of those options that's a little bit tricky. For example, if I switch here to balance mode, right, and I can turn on the Lenovo engine, but if I decide to switch to quiet mode, that toggle remains on. So don't get caught, you know, by that by surprise, because you're wondering, hey, wait a minute, why is my laptop not running in quiet mode, or I'm still getting some odd behavior. Be sure that you've unchecked that mode, because if you set performance mode, and the AI engine is toggled, it's going to resort to the AI engine, it's going to override some of the characteristics of the performance mode. So do be careful if you're trying to exactly dial in the performance and tune it yourself. Next, of course, we have quiet mode. This essentially turns all the power as, much, as far down as it can to try to keep this thing quiet, which means that it is absolutely silent. There is still a little bit of fan ramp up here and there, but it's well below 40 decibels. So for the most part, in any kind of an office environment, you won't really hear that noise. And last, we have custom mode here. This is for the tweakers are hot at heart. And I love the fact that Lenovo has given this option. You know, for, for this being a budget gaming device, to have this level of control is absolutely fantastic. My favorite software of the year for controlling your gaming laptop is has to be Lenovo Vantage. So let me tell you a few other things here that have changed since earlier this, earlier this year. When I looked at Lenovo Vantage earlier, we did not have a reset option. So thank you very much, Lenovo, for giving us an ability to reset all of our, our values to defaults rather than having to remember what the sliders are. And, and I say that because if we look at the first button here under custom mode, you can see there's a lot of things here you can tweak. So this level of control is absolutely perfecto. Thank you very much for this Lenovo. And if we look here, there's a lot of things we can control. For example, there's power limits that pertain to the CPU. We've also got the CPU to GPU dynamic boost power. You know, how much power do we wanna go from GPU to CPU? 
and the other way from the CPU to GPU as well. So you can see here from GPU to CPU, I've set it to zero watts. We always want to prioritize GPU for my particular use case. So I'm using this dynamic boost here. Be careful. Some of these can be a little bit tricky. So understand what these options are saying before you play around with them. Of course, you know, you're not going to do any harm if you find that it's your, your performance has gone awry or if you're getting weird behavior or clocks are stuttery, it's not maintaining the boost clocks, then go in here, reset this and try again. Secondly, the other beautiful thing that Lenovo always, always gave us with Lenovo Vantage and particularly so this year is fan curves. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If I had this ability on some of the Acer Predators that I reviewed this year, I would have given them a lot better uh, scores for this particular area. So this you can basically tweak at your heart's content. Uh, however, they are tied, so you can't have a lower value at a higher speed and then try to ramp the fans down. They only ramp up. The curve always has to go up. So just keep that in mind as you're tweaking with this curve. For example, if I drag this all the way up, it pushes the fan curve all the way up. So just something to keep in mind, not a big issue. And of course, when you when you make any of these changes and you close these windows, it will ask you whether you do not want to save or don't save, which will actually force the settings into effect. Uh, in addition, there is also a full, fans, full speed fans mode. In my particular testing on this particular device, even if you're gaming, I don't think this is necessarily at all. The 4050 does not generate enough heat to be able to or to require this particular level of fan speed. For the most part, if you're playing in performance mode or if you're playing in a balanced mode with the AI engine turned on, you'll have anywhere between 70 to potentially 80 degrees on that GPU, which is totally fine and within the thermal limits for this device. So if you can leave that full speed off, you know, just let it do the custom fan curve there and it'll run just fine. Or those other modes already have predefined fan curves. I guess the unfortunate thing we can say is we cannot adjust those particular modes or see what the values that are dialed in for those particular modes. Alas, the custom mode gives you a lot of capability there that you did not have on a few other devices still this year. And finally, there's a few other things to touch on here as well. There is a GPU overclock. This is available on all of the Lenovo gaming laptop laptops that I've seen this year through Lenovo Vantage. If you go here to the CPU, it'll give you a warning, <laughs> but by default, it dials in 150 megahertz overclock on the clock for the GPU and a 200 megahertz offset on the VRAM clock. So I've been running this stably without any issues. I've tried tweaking a little bit further, but I started getting some clock jumping. So I decided to reset it to those default values and left it there. Now. One more caveat here, because this is a AMD CPU powered device, we've got the 7840HS in here, eight core 16 thread CPU, that is a locked CPU. So even going into the BIOS, I checked, there is no option there to enable some sort of undervolt for that CPU. Even if you use Ryzen Master, you cannot undervolt this CPU. So unfortunately, there will not be any CPU overclock option in here, as you can do on some of the higher end Intel based uh, Lenovo Legion, such as the 7i or even the 9i, where you can go into the the BIOS, enable that toggle, and then you will have an option there to overclock or perhaps undervolt your CPU. So just keep that in mind. Of course, uh, I know there's other options here that we've looked at in a different video about Lenovo Vantage, but as, as far as thermals and fan noise is concerned, this is what you're gonna be concerned with. For the most part, I've been running in this performance mode and just kind of forgotten about it. I get great gaming performance. You know, thermals are managed and, and, and the fan noise is controlled automatically by whatever Lenovo has dialed in here and I have not found it to be very annoying. So we'll take a look at that in the next segment. That's all I have to say here for Lenovo Vantage. Great job on the reset button, great job on the fan curve, and great job on giving us the depth of customization in custom mode with Lenovo Vantage over our overclocking and uh, performance. Okay, as we start to look at the thermals on this device, we find in a theme here. The device and the laptop deck does not get ever more than 40 degrees Celsius. Keep in mind that for this test, I was running in performance mode and I had been soaking the, the device with heat using the Firmark benchmark and then also running some of the other benchmarks that you'll see later on in this video before taking this shot here of the measurement on the device and the surface temps just to show off that this device is actually very well capable of handling the thermals that are generated by the components inside this device. Now keep in mind as we go around along the home rows here and the top rows, the QWERTY rows particular and the WASD keys that were averaging around 35 to 36 
uh, degrees Celsius in terms of the temperatures there. So very, very comfortable and having run it for, you know, about two hours worth of testing here, uh, including the, the benchmarking and the soaking in with Firmark, this is a very, very respectable result. And also keep in mind there that despite it only being 35 to 36 degrees on the surface temps, I would not, and I repeat, I would not recommend that you use this device on your lap. Uh, because there is a, you know, a, a recessed hinge design or rather a pushed forward hinge design most of the heat exhaust is, is exhausted at the back of the device where the ports are and there's about an inch uh, or so of device back there so as long as you avoid that part the surface temperatures while gaming and performance will be absolutely fine and you won't have any issues with thermals all right so we'll now we'll take some acoustic measurements from this particular device to see how the fan noise is from this uh, lenovo lock 15 and we've been running here, this is F123, running the benchmark in kind of loop mode. We're running here in the performance mode through Lenovo Vantage. Uh, this game is running at the high preset at 1080p resolution. DLSS with quality mode is enabled. And we've got ray tracing turned on on high. So despite that, we're getting 72 to 73 degrees both on the CPU and GPU well within the thermal limits and we've got well over 120 130 fps in this particular game so first let's grab a quick reading from the device level just to kind of set a base mark of how loud the fans are actually at the device of course we never actually put our ears to the device so the more important reading is going to be at ear level so let's first grab our device level reading here And we can see here that we're right at about 60 decibels. It's, it is very loud coming out of the device, particularly if you put your ear to it. But of course, that's not more realistic. So let's grab an acoustic reading at ear level. All right, so we can see here that at this level, we're getting a much better and much more respectable 46 decibels, and that is running in performance mode with Lenovo Vantage. So this device is fantastic for playing. Of course, if you drop it down to the balance mode, enable the Lenovo AI engine, you'll get a little bit better in terms of acoustic performance, but not that much considering you're giving up probably a 10 to 12 or maybe even 15% or so of actual gaming performance out of this particular device. So overall, this device fares well. We'll show you a few other benchmarks here of the temperatures on this device running in a couple of other games and then we'll move on to kind of conclude what i believe this device has to offer for the budget segment in 2023 and looking here at returnal it seems to be the same story in terms of the thermal performance we can see here that running this benchmark in a few different runs here we're looking at about 70 degrees on the cpu and approximately 70 degrees on the gpu as well in repeated runs i was able to see the exact same performance in terms of thermals and keep in mind here we're running at the high preset with some of the other graphical fidelity effects turned on uh, but we're not using here or excuse me and we're also using dlss quality but we're not doing ray tracing in this game here this is a sony game and a little bit older now but the pc version is quite good for benchmarks here and additionally, we're now looking at Forspoken. This is a game that supports both DLSS and AMD FSR3. So it's a nice game I've chosen for upcoming benchmarks in the upcoming year as well. To be able to compare between and contrast between the two different techs. Uh, but as we see here, again, we're looking at about the 70 degrees mark during gameplay. Keep in mind, all of this testing was done in the performance mode using Lenovo Vantage and with DLS as to set to quality mode wherever available and with G-Sync turned on on the internal display. So we're getting some pretty good results here. You'll see eventually that the temperatures do start to climb, but they you know rarely exceed the 80 degree mark on the, on the GPU at least. Uh, on the CPU, these temps do get high, but I think they're very, very manageable and within a respectable uh, playable region. All right, so there we have it. I think in conclusion, this Lenovo Lock 15 manages thermals and acoustics very, very well. We've got a really nicely tuned device here, and Lenovo's just been doing these devices so, so well. There's a reason that the Lenovo Legion 5, the Legion 7, the Slim 7, 7i, and so many more Lenovo devices are on bestseller lists every year and best value laptops as well. Lenovo's got a formula that they are just playing with and tweaking and tweaking, and it's starting to become like aged fine wine. Uh, I do have some qualms, though, over the fact that we are only stuck with 15 and 16 inches devices. We'd love to see some larger 17 and 18 inch formats from 
uh, Lenovo hopefully in 2024. But if you're a budget buyer, if you're looking for to, to get this device for, for school, for work, for university, uh, for a little bit of editing, for some gameplay, and you're a casual gamer, I think you're gonna have a, tre a tremendous time with this laptop. The value is just incredible. And the fact that you can play most games here in the mid to low 70s or even you know at the maximum uh, low 80s this is a fantastic device for performance at 1080p the 4050 especially when combined with dlss it just completely blows every game out of the water you have no problem with it hitting that 60 fps lock and just enjoying any game that you want but and per, more so if you set lenovo vantage to balance mode with the ai engine enabled it does get better and better over time however how much time depends on how much you play your games and how often you use your computer as it takes you know the larger volume of data that it gathers the better it's able to tweak and fine-tune this device for you so if you want a device that's within the 12 to 1400 dollars mark is going to last you you know a year or two maybe perhaps three years get you through your school years at least and you can basically play games you can edit you can consume content you can get all of your work done isn't too heavy doesn't break the bank and it certainly doesn't get hot as some of the other higher end devices higher end devices that we've seen considering that the 4050 maxes out at around 100 watts more realistically around 80 to 90 watts in gaming max uh, but you'll often see it in 70 to 80 you know watts depending on what games you're playing and how taxing they are on the particular gpu so that said overall i think this is a very very great value proposition you know i love the thermals and the fan noise from this device i've enjoyed it so much i didn't actually expect to enjoy this this device so much in fact i've been playing so many games here i haven't had time to come back and get you guys all of their reviews and the thermals and everything done on here so thanks very much for watching uh, i hope you like this new format i'm trying to change things up a little bit uh, for these videos and try to have a consistent format for thermals and fan noise testing acoustic testing rather gotta up my language skills there and uh yeah so stay tuned for more upcoming content we'll definitely be looking at the difference between 8 versus 16 gigabytes of ram on the lock 15 so please get subscribed and stay tuned for that story uh, coming soon and of course there'll be a lot more content to come on additional laptops throughout the end of this year so thanks very much for watching please get subscribed if you like this content drop a like get subscribed hit that notification bell so you know when new videos are up and also please share across your social media social media channels to help grow this particular channel and we'll see you in the next video